Hey, aloha, and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Gordo the Techs are here. I'm here uh, with my good old buddy, Rick's Mauer. R-I-X-M-A-U-R-E-R, Rick's. It's not Rick. It is not. It's Rick's. I've had to deal with that. Your, your na name has killed me for the past 30 years. <laughs> anyway, here with... Me with, longer. You longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm here with Mr. Um, Maurer, and we're going to talk about the high cost of health care because he has a great deal of time spent in the hospital. No, but a great deal of time <laughs> in the industry. So grab yourself a libation and uh, pull up a chair and join us for a little interesting conversation about health care. Now, but I, <laughs> you're looking oh, at me like, George. you look nervous. <laughs> also, Rick's, Rick's is also, um, 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 you were my co-host uh, a couple of weeks couple ago. Weeks ago. Yeah, my so, bride yeah, was here. Yeah, because Mr., Mr. Landing is not abandoning us, but he's always traveling. He's also got an, an, another show he does as a co-host. So we've got a spin-off. So Hibachi <laughs> Talk has a spin-off now. It's kind of like Cheers and, you know, Frasier and everything spins off. So now <laughs> he got him spinning off. Um, so you're going to help fill in on the times that he can't be here and the times that I'm I cannot looking, be here. <laughs> looking forward to it. Could be a lot after yeah. a while. So and anyway, so we talk about high cost of health care. We're going to talk about uh, a little background on you because I think it would be good that our, our viewers know a little about you. Okay. That being said, however, i got to rant for a minute. Okay, it's all yours, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> I really got to rant for just one little minute. For all of yours, this, uh, you know, good, yeah. uh, let me give over to Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Roland and Martin's laughing with the fickle finger of fate? <laughs> I do. <laughs> you do. So anyway, this is the fickle finger of fate. Notice I'm using this one. Um, for the DCCA, who decided um, a, a month ago they're going to shut down Coinbase in Hawaii. Now, Coinbase is a cryptocurrency trader, exchange. Um, one of many, I might add. <laughs> one of many. Um, and for some reason, which I'll go into later, maybe. Um, they've decided that they cannot um, do cryptocurrency here in Hawaii unless they put in a local bank the equivalent in fiat money, which is dollars, yes. to all the currency that's out there in Hawaii in Bitcoin. That's going to be a lot of money. How do you think the bank? How much do you think the do you think the banks have to keep that much money in the bank vaults? Well, my recollection is that no, they don't need to keep 100%. It's uh, probably a tenth or so of yeah, that a, money. Yeah, a ten, 10 to 12%, I yeah. think, is the numbers. But no, no, DCCA in the state of Hawaii, in their infinite wisdom, decide that they're going to not allow them to do business here. And so they sent everybody in Hawaii notice that we had to clear out our accounts. Now, what do you, what do you think I'm going to do when I clear out my account? Do <laughs> you think there's I, only one Bitcoin place in the entire state? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I think uh, that there's options for you on that. There's many. I, I bet there are. I, a, now, granted, I didn't. I sorry, I didn't get that notice. Well, you don't have Bitcoin. Well, I might not have it in Hawaii. That is true. You might have it in other and, countries or in different state. Yes, options as avoid as opposed to the state of confusion. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the only third world state in the country. Anyway, that was, the, I, sorry, I had to deal with my little rant. No. It's fine. That's, I think that's a good, I think that's a good rant because one of the issues is, is like, you know, I mentioned, and you did too, you can put that money not in Hawaii. Yep. You can, or you can put that asset not in Hawaii, but you can put that asset in another state in the United States, or as you also mentioned, you could put that in another country. In another country? In another denomination? Yes. And that's not really good for the state of Hawaii. It's not. Again, it shows from a technological standpoint how backwards we are. Yes. And we're supposed to be forward thinking, and we're yeah. not. It shows just, again, it just reemphasizes how backward we are and how anti-business we are. Yes. And, and the fact that the state of Hawaii is now only being able to capture the general excise tax that comes from, say, Amazon. Now and, Amazon. Yes, and other large internet companies. Exactly. And, and, and the thing that I think is going to happen about this is the fact that, you know, with the legalization of medical marijuana. Yes. And they can't put their money in a federal bank. There you go. It's all ca cash, yep. no credit cards. Yes. What do they do with that cash? They buy cryptocurrencies. And there's no way the state of Hawaii can tax cryptocurrencies. So what you do? You try to close it down. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not going to close it down. It's just going to go somewhere else. It's going to go somewhere else. And it's going to hurt our tax 
it, garnishment. It, it could. It could. Could. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of us are in anyway. Bitcoin because you know there's yeah. tax benefits. It, yeah. yeah. Advantages. Anyway, so I've not. I ranted, I ranted for long. No, I just ranted right. for longer than I should. But I wanted to get a little background on you because you Please. know you've been you've been around for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Son, <laughs> thanks, Dad. Uh, so you might have been a long, a little longer. Bit longer. Yeah. So, uh, no, so give me a background. So, where did you go to school? And you know, a little background on yourself. Okay, yeah, I uh, I went to the University of California, and at, in Berkeley, at oh. Berkeley, yes, UC Berkeley. Okay, that's the show. Close it now. <laughs> <laughs> I did graduate. I'm not going to tell you when I graduated. Because back then they didn't give out degrees. <laughs> no, they did. That's part of the, the comment. Uh, what I will tell you is that uh, while I was attending UC Berkeley, there were Vietnam War uh, riots that wow. were going on. Uh, so a lot of protesting. Might give you a lot of protesting. Who was the governor? On. Well, the governor who signed my diploma okay. was President Ronald Reagan. But he was, at that point in time, not the president. He was the he was governor of the state of California. They used to call him uh, Ronald Ray Guns. Yes. I don't know yeah. why they did that, but that's what they called him, Ronald Ray Guns. Wow. So you yeah. would, so now. Ron and Nancy. Yeah, Ron and, Na Ron and Nancy. I know. What an incredible couple. So that may date me. That dates you a little bit. So, but then you've, you've been in the healthcare industry for, I yes. say millenniums, <laughs> for decades, right? Yes. You've been in, in this business for a long time. Decades. It was, yes, a different. For millennium, I started. Yeah, yeah. so that's true. <laughs> so you know, in what capacity and where? Uh, I started out really as a uh, Medicare auditor. Okay. In the healthcare industry, primarily uh, for hospitals, I kind of jumped the fence after that point in, after my auditing, and joined as a controller a hospital in the San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. From there, in now I will kind of date in '83, uh, my family and I moved here to take the position as a vice president controller of the Queens Medical Center. So you were vice president controller of the Queens Medical Center, and yeah, you are one originally. cheap son of a gun because I tell you, <laughs> you you asked me to help you move. <laughs> That's I will I never did. forgive you. That's yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rebella movers. We Rebella had to move movers. Movers. And yeah. we moved an entire house, and then you told me you had some stuff under the house, which was another house. <laughs> it was like that was. 14 hours of moving. <laughs> that was, yes. <laughs> you but, bought us pizzas. <laughs> and, I did. And my beer. wife did. Yeah, and beer. And beer. <laughs> so uh, so you, went, you went to Queens, and you're, uh, you're a controller there, and it just so happened I was there at the time yes, when you came yes, on board. That's, that's when we, we first met. met. Yeah, that's how I... <laughs> <laughs> I conned you into moving our two houses. I paid you back one time. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So, so you go to Queens Medical Center, yes. and um, wasn't that a state of the art facility when you came in? It, it wasn't a state of the art facility at that point in time, but I'm going to say probably a year, maybe two years ago, they had gotten a chief financial officer who. You know, I we knew each other. Yeah, yeah, ago, and but that after you came on board, yeah, then came, yeah, yeah. LJS, we're going to have him on the show one day. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for that Mr. one, Mr. Smith. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Larry really wanted to move the organization forward, and I know that the administration, you know, was supporting Larry to move, move forward, and those sorts of things. So, I did came in, uh, and we put in. Gosh, a, a number of new systems. We put in actually the first electronic uh, finance system yep. for Queens on a mainframe. With yes, with yeah, with you guys, uh, you know, with the IT folks. We put in a new uh, billing system, a new charge capture system on that. Yeah. We did. There was a lot of, of lot of things. Lots was, of things that went on. So, yeah. and then we're and, talking about the cost of healthcare, right? So, I mean. This is not necessarily the cost of getting you the service. This is the cost of just running the business. Yes, the back the back office of running the business, if you will. And there there are and there are costs. Yes, lots. <laughs> <laughs> we put the first email in the state of Hawaii in Queens Medical Center. Yes, so that, that was, was not great. Too bad. Yeah. Another on the but, mainframe. Yeah, but we, you know, when we first came in, um, I'm going to say it was probably a year, probably in '81, '82, somewhere in that time that the first personal computers right. were coming. 
And but again, at Queens, IT put in for the finance and for registration. Oh well, yeah, the first thirteen. 13 inch green screen 13 inch green screen and the 13 month year remember that was larry <laughs> yes, smith i yes. hated him for that i just <laughs> thought of it now that's right it's like 12 months of periods, the year. yeah <laughs> four no. four week periods 13 yeah. of them in 13 a year. larry created that which will give me a, a i loved a, it god I love him man 13 <laughs> 13 months no one had to modify the system like crazy for it but speaking of that because it gives me a segue into another thing is it's got uh, you know got one tech job thing <laughs> and so you know larry introduced a 13 month year Yes. Okay. Well, DAGS has decided we've got a new day. The how long a day will be? And Zuri's going to pop the slide. <laughs> up. See. I took a photo of it. It's up on this. So now, you, according to DAGS, your work day, your day, your whole day is during 4:30 p.m. and 6 a.m. or hours by order of DAGS. So that's it. There's no 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is it. Now I don't know how we're going to adjust our days, but that's it. Well, <laughs> that's on a wall up the street. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing else with it. It's just there. I asked a guy that was having a cigarette, you know, uh, with his um, sitting and counting or state yeah. bag, uh, badge. I said, "What does that mean?" He goes, well, "I don't know." <laughs> yeah. If it begins at four thirty in the afternoon, <laughs> and it, when do I have breakfast? When do I have breakfast? <laughs> Give your union a shotgun. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, so that one, that's that. So coming back to the thirteen month year, and of how, how many hours is that in a day now? <laughs> and you get nap time. <laughs> Oh, that was someone else. Uh, yeah, yeah. We won't go down that road. Um, so, so you, you, so again, I'm going to come back. So, why is it so damn expensive in healthcare, right? Why is you know, it's not just the procedures; it's all of the things that that go on in the background. Yeah. yeah, and and I think it's things that go on in the background. But the other thing that can make healthcare expensive is that you and I are very different. And so, as physicians, no, you know, if, yes. you're cheap. I'm not. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I'm old. You're not. <laughs> but if you have to have your knee done versus my knee done, yeah. that may be entirely different. Just because you played football, you played hockey. Yeah. Me? You went to Berkeley. Not so much. I went to Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> you sat but, in the grass yeah. a lot. Sat on the grass. He's always yeah. I said sat. <laughs> Here's how you, you know, when your uh, level of pain that you can endure, probably much higher than mine. You know, my, my level of pain as a 10 is probably maybe a four or five for you. <laughs> or non-existent. So, yeah. there's, not, right. there's no so, brain cells up here. Right. So do you need a lot of pain medication when your knee is done? Me, probably not. So there's a lot of differences that you know, will happen that make how care is delivered to you and how it's delivered to me may be entirely different. The important thing here is very appropriate for me and very appropriate for how it comes to you. Mm, mm. So that makes, it's, it's not as though that, you know, we are built on a... We're not all, we're all not Fords. No. We're, we're all not, not whatever, like Toyotas. Yeah. Uh, with that, i got to take a Toyota break. <laughs> I'm not even promoting them, whatever, <laughs> unless they donate something <laughs> yeah. to this organization. Anyway, uh, Gordo, <laughs> text <Tech> star. <laughs> What did I call you? The money? The money, money bag. bags. Money Mauer. bags. Money bags. Mauer, um, here on Hibachi Talk. We'll be back after a break. Aloha. This is Kelihi Akina with the weekly Ehana Kako. Let's work together program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. Movers and shakers and great ideas. Join us. We'll see you then. Aloha. Hi, I'm Nicole Alexander Enos, and I was born three weeks ago. <laughs> Congratulations on being there for me for some of the few weeks of my life. I'm starting a new show, The Millennial Mind, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for the month of April, where we'll go over some of the reasons why millennials are some of the most anxious and frustrated people at the moment. Ah! Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Hawaii, and I do a show called Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where shrinks and sometimes other people come on and talk about the art and science of 
psychology, talking to people, relationships. Uh, so if you are curious about shrinks and want to be shrunk and don't know where to go, tune into Shrink Rep Hawaii. All right? All right. Hello, hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the host of the Cyber Underground on Think Tech Hawaii. And this is my co-host, Andrew Lanning, well, the security everybody. guy. <laughs> uh, every week at 5 p.m., we'll be discussing cybersecurity, the things to look out for, and the things to do to keep yourself safe. Check us out on Think Tech Hawaii, 5 o'clock Fridays. Thank you. Welcome back, folks. When we appreciate you coming back to us, and right now we have a brief message from Angus. So, welcome back. Hey there, Rick. Hey, hey, how are you doing today? That? You know, you got a Scottish last name, you know. <laughs> we fought you in 1347. It was, or 38. Or 38, whatever it was. I still remember what your mother did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, I got, you know, it's a healthcare theme show, you know, and I tried to keep it thematic. So guess what I got? I got a great piece of technology that the hospitals can now use. And I got to show a picture. How about, how about underwear-shaped bandages? <laughs> so there, how neat is that, right? Underpant bandages. You can wear your whitey tighties on your arm, <laughs> on your head, on your neck, or wherever you want. It's a great, great piece of medicine. And it's cheap, too. Anyway, that's, what, that's all I have for my short, brief <laughs> message. And with that, like I say, everybody, every week, let your wing gang free, where are you be? Hello! Ha! We beat you in 1835. <laughs> well, thanks very much for that brief message. <laughs> we really appreciate that one, Angus. So I'll turn it back to our, our host, Gordon. I know, we don't know where we're going to go next. Uh, there goes the Alello again. Um, so, Mike, so we were talking about healthcare and the cost of healthcare. And, and coming back to where you talked about the pain threshold and so on, I'll give you an example. So, you know, I go, I have a surgery. And the doctor prescribes um, oxy, how do you call it? Oxy, not oxyclean, but oxycodone. <laughs> oxycontin. Or, oxycontin. And he prescribes like 20 tablets. He, and I go to the pharmacy and they give me a look like you wouldn't believe. Actually, I had to go to three pharmacies because no one would fill 20. <laughs> Finally went to one and they filled it. And I used one. But I had to pay for, or the insurance company had to pay for 20. Yeah. And what do I do with those other 19? And I'm not, and I know you exactly saw that look. <laughs> no, I ain't. Bitcoin, does that come into play? Or? Bitcoin, yeah, right. <laughs> but to, that, that, to me, that's kind of like, that's waste. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is. But again, that's where we really need to go. And probably one of the next thing, well, I know that uh, insurance companies and certainly hospitals as well, uh, they're really looking at how do we put together what is the Best, how do we get to the best outcome of the of the of taking care of, of taking the patient. care of the patient right exactly and what makes that so difficult I think is how different the different patients are and so what may be an excellent outcome for you and an excellent outcome for me could be very different because part of it is what we talked about a little bit earlier. You may not need 20 Oxycontin. Right. So if you only need four. Then whatever, why not four? Yeah, then you get four saved money there. For me, I may have a higher, you know, or a, a, let's say more a lower, pain. More yeah, pain. A lower threshold for, for pain. And I might need those 20. Right. So it's going to cost me a little bit more. It's going to cost you a little bit less. But right now, you get prescribed the same amount as I do. So those are the kinds of things that we have to, to look at and say, what can get an excellent outcome for me and what can get an excellent outcome for you? And how do we, how do we go back and then look at and know that so that you get the right input right. to get an excellent outcome, I get a different input to get my excellent outcome because we're different. We're different. And, and so and what we're talking here then is like in, is we're talking about gathering data, data. And, and, and accumulating all of this information right. that would then Major. give us knowledge yes. on what we should be doing. Right. But the, I, and that's the, no one shares that the term, stuff. gargantuan data. Yeah. That, 
I like it, gargantuan data. Gargantuan, it. Yeah. yeah. Big data. Big data, yeah. <laughs> but now we're talking gargantuan and, data. Yeah, and how do we get the data, and then how do we analyze it so that our physicians and other healthcare workers know, you need less, I need more. Yeah, so, and to the extent that you can get a much better, you know, you can, you can still get a, an excellent outcome, but f put in fewer dollars. Well, especially if they know your history, right? Exactly. Because if, if to my knowledge, not many doctors, clinicians, proceduralists, I'll call them, like x-ray, whatever, hospitals, insurance companies share that data, yeah. right? Everybody's got it in, a, in their silo. Yeah. And so now, how do I get, how do I yeah. know I'm getting affordable care? How do I know I'm getting the best care yeah. if they don't share the data? Exactly. HIPAA compliant data. HIPAA compliant. Encrypted data. Yeah. <laughs> and how do you pull it together? Because it is big data. Yeah. And how do you pull it together from, you know, the, the different people who own that data? You know, the insurance companies own some of that data, right. probably a bunch of that right. data. Uh, the hospitals own a bunch of that. So you're saying this word record. own, which the, makes me kind of... The doctors, too. Own it. Yeah, but own do it. they own the Clinics. data or do we really own the Do I own the data? That becomes... Now I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. focusing on this. Like, Why does the, the doctor, the group, the hospital, the healthcare provider think they own... The, isn't that my data? Well, I think it's both. Okay. It, uh, both the provider and the patient's data okay. who has, what would I say, control of that data. And that's not really a good word, but who, um, but they, they it's within, it. the, yeah, they manage it. It's within their purview of the data right now. It's outpatient clinics, physicians, other outpatient healthcare providers, the inpatient providers, hospitals, and the payers, primarily the insurers so, on that. So how do we pull all we of pull that, together? that together? And who, what is, who is the organization? What is the organization that can get all of that to You know what? Together? The state of Hawaii, they're taking on Bitcoin. Why don't they take off all of that too? <laughs> well, I'll let you know. <laughs> in their spare time. So I, can't get, I can't give up you're on that. You're on a roll. Yeah, you're <laughs> not on a bit of a roll today. But, 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 yeah. So, but you're, you're right. It's like it's all of this, this data. Now, here's the thing interesting is that you're talking about all the stuff that's going on in the background kind of thing, but then you've, you still got the, the doctors, the surgeons, the nurses, the clinicians. Yeah. And so I'm going to throw a real hard question at you, and I, this is going to be a tough one. Yeah, what do you think percentage of, so of, of the medical, direct medical mm. related staff versus the back staff, what's the cost? 50-50 for the back oh. of the house? 2080? I mean, I don't, I don't know. No, yeah. I, I would say, and this is off the top of my head, I would say the front of the house where the care is delivered, you know, hands-on care, gosh, that's got to be, I, I've got to say, off the top of my head, I'd say 20, or I'm sorry, that would be 80%. 80%. 80% that, hands-on care. There's, yeah. Yeah, based on my, my you know, experience in the healthcare business, and I have been there a long time, and I had got clients that are healthcare, I think you're about right, that 80% of the direct care yes. is there. Yeah. And then you've got important really things like nursing, nurses. I yes. mean, they're, they're, they are not inexpensive, but they, I think they're one of the most valuable part of they are, the whole care delivery system. They are absolutely the most, one of the most valuable parts because they're, they're interacting with the patients you know, especially on the inpatient side, you know, they're interacting all the time with the patients and the patient's family. Yeah, and yeah, that's true. And they know, and they know that they know they know the patient. Absolutely. And they can be alerted if, if something if they see certain things happening, whether it be from the pharmacy or right. from the um, uh, from the, from the attending physician or whatever. So they're kind of a key piece, but they're not inexpensive. No, they are not, and and that's all. I'm okay with that. Because they are such a key. I mean, they are, for an inpatient, they are, I would suggest, kind of a first responder. Okay. You know, because after, if, if I'm coming in for surgery, yeah, I want to have the best surgeon for me possible. Right. But then, after I'm out of surgery, he, the physician, he or she, is going to hand me off to the out, or well, to the recovery room. Right. 
nurses. Pre and post op. Yes, pre and post op all the time there. Uh, and then onto a floor to do my recovery. And the key folks on that, where you know I'm going to spend the bulk of my time, is going to be by nurses, in and out. How am I doing? How, not what I'm saying as much as how do I really look? Mm -hmm. uh, how, what are, my, what are my vital signs doing? Yeah, yeah. what are your you know, those fluid intakes, things. your fluid outtakes? All of those kinds yeah. of things. And they'll see if I'm having a post-op problem or not. Okay, so then again, we're both, we both 100% agree that, that nurses are a key player. But one of the challenges that I've always had is, like, is, is the travel nurses. Yeah. yeah, they bring nurses in from out of state. When there's graduate, I realize that travel nurses are experienced. There's, there's no argument there. But you've got gra new nurses that are graduating from University of Hawaii who can't get a job. So it's like, yeah, You've hit on a key point. Key point there. You want me to... No, because you know, I guess what? we're gonna we're gonna have to do this again because you're not gonna believe this, but we've used up all the show. I, I, I love it. Well, kind of that dangling participle. And think of the uh, dangling participles. Um, are you kidding me? Call nine one one. See this phone. It's on. It's on, it's on, it's on, it's on Baratania, by the way. I need a doctor right away. Yeah. Well, there's no phone on the end of it. It's been sitting there for. You won't see that, that in a hospital. You I hope not. You'll man. be able to call your nurse. Doctor Curly, Doctor Larry, Doctor Mo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go to the Texar. I'm here with Rick's Mauer. Um, I got that name. Moneybags. Moneybags Mauer. <laughs> Rick, Rick's Moneybags Mauer. He's going to be helping me co-host the show and Andrew co-host the show. And we'll continue uh, uh, these themes on healthcare. So thanks, Zuri, Ray, everybody for helping this show happen. Tonight is um, Boys Bunch, April Foolish Party down at Gordon Beers. If you see me there, I've still got a few tickets. I'll give you in, give, get you in for free, free 99. And then we got the cyber show starting at 5 o'clock. I guess I'm the guest on that one. <laughs> they can't find anybody. Anyway, oh, like we say it, uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Hibachi Doc. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, How you doing? doing?